performance of cricket dressing is dependent upon many factors, but the ultimate aim is to produce a hard surface that will grow healthy grass and not break up during play. This is achieved by selecting loams with sufficient clay content supplied with nutrients present in naturally occurring loam. Now a good quality cricket loam will produce a surface that can be described as the nearest thing to concrete that will grow grass. Now the mixtures used and the definition of cricket loam can drastically change depending on which part of the world is using it. In the northern hemisphere, loam is soil comprised of mostly sand, silt and smaller amounts of clay. By weight, its mineral composition is around 40%, 40%, 20% concentration of sand, silt, clay, respectively. However, in the southern hemisphere, typically in places like Australia, where the climate is tropical and a much larger portion of clay is used, sometimes upwards of 60%. Now, the high clay content soils used in Australia and the West Indies, which potentially provide a very fast pitch, are, however, generally inappropriate for use in England and less favourable in the climatic conditions for soil drainage rates. Now, most people pay attention to the clay content. While this is important to indicate the kind of binding strength to expect from the product, it's not the sole factor we need to focus on. Higher clay content can indicate a higher binding strength, but soil is complex, so a combination of the sand, silt and clay with lower clay and higher sand contents can give more resilient products. Particles interact, so the correct balance is often superior to simply having one higher count in one other category. Organic matter, or OM, can often be vital as a simple clay content. Now, if a loam has a high organic content, soil development over a period of time will produce hummus and vegetable matter, both of which can contribute to the increase in organic matter. Insufficient end-of-season renovations can be a major contributor in this organic matter in cricket squares. Why does sand and silt matter? They don't seem to contribute, which is incorrect. We all have to bow at the maximum balance. It has been said in the past that the perfect loan for a cricket wicket is roughly around 33% of each, sand, silt and clay. But this rarely ever occurs in nature and the sand and silt will help fill any gaps left between the clay when rolling and compaction is carried out to produce a wicket. Now some of the benefits of having a uniform soil texture and a good soil structure are high drainage rates, increased root development, a surface that is able to withstand wear, positive air circulation and a healthy microbial population, reduced disease and a drier surface. If you like this video, please like, comment, subscribe and check out some of our previous videos in the links below.